solution with a solution. We're gonna take it to the overload. Rebel radical retribution. We're here to get what we are. Old. We've been going around telling people it's a heavier album, and people seem to think instantly, even before they've heard it, you know, they think, oh, it's gonna be totally different from all that other Ash stuff, but it's still. It's retained the melodic side of the band. I think it's mainly sort of backing tracks have sort of moved on to be a bit more muscular or whatever, but it still retains you know, that like, typical Ash melody in there, so it strikes a good balance, I think. We spent most of the last year touring the States, playing with lots of different American bands and I think Tim wrote a lot of songs on the road. It's kind of influenced by sitting in the van for hours and end listening to K-Rock and kind of soaking in that kind of American culture. It's the first time we've worked with American producers and it, you know, it was just a much more professional way of doing it. I think a big part of it, the new sound as well is Rick's drumming. You know, he's really pushed himself. I don't know, and he's, I think he's actually taken himself seriously as a, as a musician, and he's just playing. He's coming up with just new beats that he would never have done before. We spent a lot of time last year touring with, you know, a lot of American bands. I think that obviously, you watching all their drummers as well. And Dave Grohl was down in the studio hanging out, and we call Rick Money Grohl. Yeah, it's just rather bizarre having you know, the guy that was in the band that was pretty much responsible for us getting together in the first place, you know, and sort of getting our sound. To have him sort of hanging out and sort of like telling us how much he loved the songs and stuff like that, you know, he's just a really cool guy to, to hang around. I think um, we were listening back to Clones in the studio, and Dave Grohl was around and he kind of came in and was listening to it. And I think everyone couldn't, because it's such an extreme song for us, I think everyone couldn't believe that it was us and it sounded that good. Real rock songs. The song Clones is I think, one of the most extreme songs that she's recorded in terms of it's very heavy, it's a real kind of heavy riff. Um, but it's still got that kind of very melodic chorus to it. And, essentially Ash, but it's pretty, it's pretty out there. I think Ash have already always had like a really hard edge to it, but I think we really embraced it on Crying. Yeah. Really went for it. Yeah, we recorded a, did the video with Jeff Thomas, who did our previous videos like Burn, Burn, Burn and the Free Will Angel stuff. Um, and we kind of just, went to a kind of dingy warehouse <laughs> and recorded it. We wanted to do a really live, because it's such a, a brilliant live song, so we want to capture that. It's quite aggressive video. It was cold and damp and a nasty sort of like warehouse, but um, I loved it. It was it was good fun. Yeah, the only real direction we were given was sweat. In the coldest video shoot we've ever had, sweat. You know, that thing. <laughs> the song meltdown I wrote after um, I went on one of the peace marches last year, it's February. It was one of the biggest ones ever, you know, it was like two million people in London alone. And I was just really inspired by that and just really angry about the whole situation. And, you know, I just put that all into the song. There's been about four songs from the album which we've been playing for about a year and a half now anyway. It's 
a sunny kind of rocker. I think it's going to be our next single, and it's going to be it's a perfect summer song. Real good driving song, I think. Yeah, real road trip song. Yeah. And yeah, it's in it's a, in a film called Shaun of the Dead. Romantic comedy horror. Rom zom com. Yeah, it's, it's a rom zom com. <laughs> Did not Renegade Cavalcade and Orpheus and Evil Eye actually we played. So some of the fans already know those songs from last year. Um, and I think the good thing about this album is that, that all the songs are very instant and they're brilliant in a live situation. Ash gigs are normally just fans going crazy, and so you can't help but feed off that. And I think we've always been really energetic and, and quite crazy on stage. I love being on tour, sitting around. So when you get to get on stage <laughs> at night, you're just like, yeah. there's a lot of pent up energy. We usually spend about well between an hour and half an hour. Depends how busy we are before it trying to get ourselves in the right mind frame for going on stage, you know. Usually each of us have our own processes. Well, my process is now, like, the minute anyone else is in the dressing room, is to start practicing any, the minute someone walks through the doors, it really annoys them. He's got the whole sort of like mini drum set up. Yeah, the practice pad and stuff. So. Well, I guess we're, we're all starting to warm up. You know, before she was like Rick warms up his drums and we get vibed up for singing, that kind of thing. So we're actually taking ourselves seriously and trying to be professionals. <laughs> it feels like you're going at incredible speed. I suppose just before we go on stage, um, I really hate going on there cold in the first place. So you try to warm yourself up, get your heart rate going, and maybe lift a few weights, pick up chairs or something stretch so you don't get cramped and ice myself down, drink a few shots just to sort of get, I don't know. They're the best shows whenever the fans really, you know, whenever they're kicking off then you sort of, it draws you into the whole thing, you perform better and then they can feed that with, in return they'll see that you're enjoying it. In the past, we've done quite a lot of things involving our fans. Like we let them pick where we put, go on tour. You know, we did a whole tour where we you know, did like really out of the way places in the UK that no one goes to, and you know, let them sometimes let them pick set lists. It's rubbish. As well. No, not doing that. That's rubbish. God, Jesus, man, that's rubbish. Rubbish. We're really interactive on the website. Mark and Rick go on all the time. It's always chatting away, and we get a lot out of that. You know, try to really include them in what we were doing, and we started off letting them vote for event. You know, where we'd go on tour, what we'd play, and just asking their general opinions on most stuff. They mean a lot, they're very exciting. Um, I feel like I grew up with them and their music. They always seem very nice compared to a lot of the other bands you don't bother at all. It's nice to know they've got a good rapport with their fans and the audience. We've seen them live loads of times. They're, really? they're the best band ever, yeah, really. They're dead cool. What do you like so much about them? Well, well, they bring a real, real major energy, but they've also got a sense of melody. Most bands these days just seem content to hit you with a wobble of noise. They've got a sense of melody about them, it's really appealing. I mean, Tim Wheeler writes fantastic songs, bottom line. They're great. I've seen them um, 15, 16 times. No. Yeah, he's seen them more. Uh, about 28 times, yeah. Uh, I've liked them since uh, 94, so I love them. They also feel part of the whole thing, you know? It's like their band. It 
it was great for Free Angels to go back in at number one. We didn't really expect that, and we thought it, we thought it was a good album and it would do well, but we didn't think it would do quite so well. One of the best things that ever happened was winning an Ivan Novello for Shining Light. Um, Ivan Novello is it's, it's the award ceremony of the British Academy of Composers and Songwriters, and Shining Light won kind of, I think it's the best contemporary song of the year. It's a real proper award. It's really a good heavy award as well for whacking burglars. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, Tim is the core songwriter, you know, and the front man, he's the most visual person. He has to carry a lot on his shoulders, you know, he's got a lot of pressure to come up with the songs and every time he comes up with them, you know. He's a great frontman as well, and he's a lot of time for people. A lot of, you know, what do we call it, rock stars as such, it can be quite arrogant and like, you know, buddies. He will talk to anyone, you know. He's definitely given Dave Grohl a run for his money in the nicest, nicest guy, guy in rock. rock. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mark is kind of he's like, he almost seems like a silent guy at the back when a lot of you know photos or videos and stuff. But really, um, he's very involved in the whole thing. Because we started the band together when we were 15, and really, um, I don't know. He's the one, probably, he's the most passionate about the whole idea. Like, he's, he's a real driving force. Yeah, he gets involved in all the artwork, and he designs all the designs for t-shirts and stuff. He kind of, he's a real kind of internet geek as well. He does a lot of the website and stuff. I guess what Nick Charlotte brings to the band, a bit of glamour, I guess, you know, compared to the the three ugly boys from Northern Ireland. And you know, it's just, um, I know she's been in the band a long time, but it's like such a difference since she's joined, you know, just the, us being able to do what we want to do, you know, and like, like translate what we've done in record into a live setting. Rick is, he's kind of an odd man. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's, a bit, he's the craziest one, but he's also like the most intelligent. He's like, the wisest. He's really, yeah, he's like idiot someone. Bananas are an essential part of touring life because they contain <coughs> potassium, which is an antidepressant. You know, so because being on tour all the time, you can kind of like sometimes get down. This is a secret. Well, we do tour constantly, so it's something that we're just so comfortable with and yeah. really embrace that side of, of being in the band. Germany's been pretty, yeah. like we've got some loyal fans there. We've done really well in Germany on the last album. You know, we were touring our own sort of large clubs and stuff. Are you ready? Japan is always well, the best, you know. It's probably the only place where every album we go back, we just get bigger and bigger. You know, it's been it's been really cool to us. We've consistently sold more albums every time we go, you know, every race in Japan. I think America's been sort of really good, you know, touring-wise. We've spent a lot of time there, and we've seen things develop through touring. Some of the best gigs I've I've had have been in New York and around the states. I guess the average tour day would involve getting up early, sort of getting into our van and driving for a few hours till we arrive at, into the town that we're playing. Then uh, maybe go visit a radio station, play some acoustic songs. Uh, Tim, you've been playing with Mark forever, and you guys have yeah. had, a, had a bunch of uh, indie singles on the UK charts when you were still in high school. Yeah, when we were like 17. Unbelievable. 18. Yeah, our parents had to sign a record deal for us. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's that quite a long time ago now. And, and then this is what the sound has developed into, and this is uh, Ash, and what song is this that we're going to hear? We're going to do Burn, Baby, Burn. Okay. Yeah, so it goes like this. One, two, three, four. You're all I have in this teenage 
twilight Your golden hair and pale blue eyes But through all the days and the sleepless nights We have never been satisfied Time will like the leaves Yeah, we are spiraling on the breeze Almost to the point of no return Everything will burn, baby, burn so we're gonna keep coming back to the UK and play bigger venues um, and we're going off to Europe because we haven't really played Europe for about two years, you know, we've been off in the States doing Free Will Angels so it's good to get back to Europe and play the UK and then we're going to go off to everywhere else in the world. I mean, I think the previous albums have been quite hard to pin down as to what they are, but this this is just like, I guess it's like 10 rock songs and one sort of, like, it's got Star Cross, which is a kind of, like, slower ballad. One thing about the record was we wanted to capture our live sound because you know we've always been a lot heavier live and this is probably the first record where it's going to sound almost identical live to yeah. the record. I think this record is more a representation of us as a live band really. Um, that really comes across. So I think it, for me, I think it feels quite natural to have these like sort of songs in a different vein playing those on stage. You know, we've never really cared about what the fashionable music is at the time. You know, it's. Um, Sometimes we've been totally at odds with what is going on, but we sort of survived that because we just had an individual thing. But I think for the first time, possibly, like, with this new album, we're going to be right on it. You know, like rock music is where it's at at the moment.